What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to be talking about Death Must Die. That's right. This is an amazing indie action horde RPG, I guess you want to say. It's like, you know, Vampire Survivor. It's called Death Must Die. And basically, it, it, you go around, it's a horde mode, and you pick up, you know, power ups and things like that. Well, this came out. I think last year on Steam, and they recently had an update, right? They recently put out an update called Act 2. And so it is taking a little bit more uh, inspiration from Diablo. So it's, it's incorporating more ARPG elements than I've seen in other Horde mode RPGs. So what they've done is they've taken it to the next level. They've taken the, the indie genre, the horde genre, you know, the indie developers, they've taken it to the next level. And if you haven't played this game or downloaded it, you need to. If you like RPGs at all, you need to download Death Must Die. Go on Steam, go check it out right now. You will not regret it, okay? It was published and developed by Realm Archive. Uh, I don't know too much about them or, or anything like that, but you can see it's an action roguelike you know, bullet hell, roguelike RPG type thing. And, you know, we could go over that and I'm going to have some gameplay footage, but basically you go through, there are multiple different gods and you get power-ups. Well, the original Death Must Die was really addicting on its own. It only had one act. And basically you would go through the act and you would have bosses, a 20 minute boss run, basically. So you go for 20 minutes and, you know, every like six minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, you'd have an elite boss that popped up. You got lots of loot. There's, you know, there's uh, different levels of loot. There's randomized loot drops. So it is like, you know, a looter type game where you want to get loot. So it is a treasure game where you want it to get loot. Now, in the first act, when it first came out, it didn't have too much depth to it, right? It was just an indie title, but it did take off. It did get a cult following and it was pretty successful for, for a while. It was pretty successful and people were, you know, waiting for the update, waiting for act two. Uh, which recently released, I can't remember if it really released, it released in April, I think. Um, and so I recently just downloaded it, Act 2, and it's in a desert, you know, so obviously taking that Diablo 2, that Diablo approach where every second act is in the desert, right? With Act 2, what they did was polish the game a lot. So they added skill trees and they added categories for all your different attacks. So in the first act, it was kind of randomized. You would get spells like uh, Chain Lightning, for example. And you wouldn't know what Chain Lightning was because there were different buffs that said, hey, this buffs your cast or just this buffs your attack or attack speed. And you wouldn't really know what Lightning, you know, Chain Lightning was categorized under. So in act two, they categorized all of your attacks. So all of your attacks are, attacks are categorized. So Chain Lightning is a strike. So there's a category called strikes. And strikes are a specific set of spells that proc from your basic attacks. And then they have, they added uh, casts. So it's, it's quite clear now when you get a spell and it's a cast, it says cast. It has its own category, its own set of buffs. And basically cast are spells that automatically trigger. So you don't have to do anything for cast. You, you're, just, you're just there and it just automatically triggers. There's also a category called power. And powers are, from what I gather, more, type, more passive type stuff. There's a power where it gives you an aura, right? And when you get close to enemies, it starts damaging them more and more and more. And you'll see that. It's super OP. 
The best offense is a good defense, champion. But that's a power. There's your attacks or basic attacks. So you know when something boosts your attack, it boosts your actual basic attack. You know it doesn't affect the other ones. And then they added a class for summons. So all of the summons have its own class now. So they categorized everything and made it nice and neat and pretty. Whereas before in Act 1, it wasn't really the case. In Act 1, basically you didn't know what was what. You kind of knew summons were summons, but not really. But in, in this one, with Act 2, with the update, you know what you know. a strike is a strike, a power is a power, a summon is a summon, a cast is a cast, right? And then there are multiple different classes, and then the classes have multiple, have different skill trees. So each class specializes in something. I mostly play with the sorcerer or the mage, so the mage, the most of the most of the skills for the mage are going to be summoning skills and cast skills, which makes sense. Now, if you're playing, a, you know, an archer or the knight, you're going to see a skill tree that's more geared toward probably strikes and cast or strikes and summons and things like that, depending on which, you know, class you're going to play. And Act 2 is amazing. Act 2, the enemies are beefed up. The enemies are more uh, dynamic. They have more of a flow to them. They have uh, tele more telegraphed attacks. And you'll see in Act 2, there are more telegraphed attacks. Whereas in the vanilla game, they had, they had, uh, you know, they had telegraphed attacks, but they were a lot more basic. They're basic, were basic lines or a cone, you know, or a triangle, you know, or a triangle. There weren't too many like, mm, like weird telegraphed attacks. Whereas in act two, there's like rain that comes down from one of the bosses. So, you know, you can see the telegraph moving on the ground. There's flames that come up out of the bottom when you're getting attacked. There are these like uh genie or gins or some kind of creatures that fly around and they throw bombs and the, the, you know, the telegraphed attacks, you know, the reds on the ground and it's telegraphing everywhere. That's really nice that they didn't have in the first one. So whether you played the act one or not, when you, when the game originally came out, you need to go download it and try act two. So I wanted to get the message out there about act two specifically. You're going to, you're going to have skill trees. You're going to have more loot. You're going to have more dynamic gameplay. And they added a, you know, an archer or well, a rogue basically class. So there's a new class as well for act two. has a little bit more lore to it, but it's not really a lore heavy game. And they added a new God. So there are gods in this game and the gods are the ones that give you the power ups. Pick one. <laughs> fates, we make our own fates mortal. They're there just sitting, in urns, for an eternity. And he doesn't get it. He just doesn't get life and death, you know? The righteous laws must be upheld. 
So there's, you know, the, the Earth Goddess. I uh, can't remember her name off the top of my head. That is the only downside is, I think, the new Earth skills, the set of Earth skills that they have. Uh, I don't like like the way they look or play. I don't like the way the new Earth Goddess plays. You'll have skills like uh, Avalanche or um, there's a, there's one of these skills where they're like their fist above your head and they just smash the ground. They do a lot of damage, but don't really look that good. You know, it's like it, the, the Earth attacks aren't really visually appealing. That's one negative. The other negative I would say is um, the summon blades. So there's a, there's a God of war and he uh, gives you physical attacks. These attacks basically cause bleeding for the most part. Uh, those attacks need to be buffed big time because there are, there's attack called blades. It doesn't really, it doesn't really do that much. Uh, chains of war do, doesn't really do that much. Um, the, uh, the, the blade summons don't really do that much out of, out of everything in the game. Those are the only minor complaints that I have. Um, you know, act two, the difficulty of act two, it's pretty difficult. I, I was barely able to beat it without, without powering it up. So when you beat an act, when you beat act one, you get this, um, you can go to the middle of, you know, um, the hideout, you go to the middle of the, the cave, whatever, uh, basically, and you power up the enemy. So it could go all the way up to, to, I think 30. So you could power up the level of the monsters all the way up to 30. And they have different buffs, you know, like giving them hundred percent extra health or bosses shoot more missiles or enemies move faster. You get it right. You power them all up. Well, when you buff them all up, the game gets really, really, really hard. That's where you need the loot comes in. So you're on a loot grind and you have the skill tree to play with based on the loot. So that's what I was talking about where. This game is leading more into the ARPG genre, and I like to see it. This game has the potential to actually develop into a double A game. It has a it has the potential to become an actual like franchise. This is a great game. This is such a good foundation. Right now, they have Act 1, Act 2, and I'm guessing they're gonna add an Act 3 and Act 4. And when this game is finally complete with all four acts. It's going to be insane. It's going to be where, hey, this publisher, this developer, they deserve to get picked up by a bigger company if they want to, right? Only if they want to. And hey, we're going to have a, a death must die too. And this is going to be a legitimate, you know, double A franchise from an indie to a double A. That, that's how I feel about the game. And I know this video, I'm kind of rambling. It's completely unscripted. And... The point of it was, I want to get the message out there, out there about Death Must Die. Because I think a lot of people played it when it first came out, but then overlooked the update because they think that, you know, they might have gotten all that they could out of it. But I'm telling you, for such a small game, you'll get at least 60 plus hours out of it. Because you got to think about this, the runs are 20 minutes each. So by the time, you know, you've done five, you're already at 100 minutes. And it just, it goes on and on and on from there. And because it's a loot chase game, you know, a loot game where you want to get more loot, you do lots of runs and it gets addicting too. It gets addicting. If I start playing this game and I start doing runs, I will get addicted and I will play for at least a couple of hours, just doing runs over and over, trying to get better loot and playing around with the skill tree, which you can reset. So they added the new skill tree. You can reset it. And it's pretty nice because you can reset it and play around with different strategies and different things, depending on what loot you get. I played around with the, with the sorcerer. I played around with a, a pure summoner build. So I, I went pure summoner and then I played around with a pure cast build. And then I did, a, did one where I was a hybrid with attack and summon. And you know, uh, I think, you know, the hybrid works the best because you need attacks in this game. I feel like, I feel like you do need the attacks in this game. So anyways, yeah, you'll have a lot of fun and no matter what play style you have, there's a class for you. There's a knight, there's a rogue, there's an archer, 
uh, there's an assassin, there's um, an orc who does this like little spin with the, the axe. He does this like a little spin attack type thing. Let's go over all the features one more time because I am scattered all over the place, right? All right. So we have two acts now because of the update. We have a new class. So I think, I think there's four, there, I think there's four, there's, I think there's five classes, four or five classes. Each class has its own skill tree. Each class has class specific items you can get. There's uh, standard common items, rare items, epic items, legendary items, and, and super, super rare items. So there's multiple different, uh, you know, um, there's multiple different tiers of weapons and items. And you have your full assortment. Hey, you could have boots, gloves, armor, rings, amulet, helmet, that type of thing. So we have all those slots that you can find, uh, you know, items for. You're loot chasing items for all those slots for all different characters. Each character has a separate, separate uh, progression, so to speak, because they use different things. Now, once you beat an act, you can power up the act using another class. So it does share progression overall. There are multiple different gods. They added a new god this time, a new goddess, I should say, which is the earth goddess. Um, all new powers. They basically narrowed down and classified all of the attacks to make it easier to understand so that you can have builds. So you can have multiple different builds for multiple different classes. Each run, ta each, uh, you know, run takes about, is a 20 minute run. So each run is a tw 20 minutes. Um, at the end, you are guaranteed, you know, uh, legendary loot drops. So at the end, you're pretty much guaranteed to get legendary loot drops. And that's usually when you get the best stuff. So typically you want to try to get to the end of the level to get the best loot. It's addicting spells all over the place. Performance is really good. I haven't had any slowdown whatsoever, no matter what. I There's so much stuff that you can have on the screen at one time, and I've never had a slowdown, which is pretty good. It's a very polished game. It's a whole new like genre of blended different types of ARPGs, roguelike, and, and hordes. It, it, uh, they're doing such a good job, man. They're doing such a good job. So props to Realm Archive. This game is fun. This game is addictive. And the best part about it is it's super affordable. Right now, it's only $5.59. Open up your Steam. Boot up your Steam. Download this game right now. You won't regret it. You're going to get 50 to 100 hours of play out of this game. Guaranteed. If you like RPGs at all, you're going to love this game. That and these are my thoughts on Death Must Die. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I appreciate everyone who jumped on board from the beginning. I am almost at 200 subs and really appreciate it. I love playing these games. I love giving my commentary on it. And the more positive feedback I get, the more I want to do this, the more videos I want to make. So appreciate that. Let me know if there's a game you want me to cover. Drop it in the comments. I will go ahead. I will download it. This was the video. Death Must Die is awesome. Thanks for watching.